the ability to say that this is what we can afford is what mm. makes many men to get into debt because then they say, me, I will do this thing to impress my friends, mm. to impress mm. the women who are in my life. Ah, me, I'll go and take a debt. Mm. And then you can then you know you can't afford, afford, afford. and it's not necessary. And it's not necessary. Then you go and buy a big vehicle. Your vehicle alone, one side of it in our Ribika, you mm. have to sell some portion of land to fix it. <laughs> but because you are, you know, mimi ndo, mimi ndo kusema. Kaboom, wow, 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 we welcome back to Manspective Africa. And of course, uh, I am the Golden Voice God, San Chiron Glovo. My name is Dan Ishodongo, aka the son of Kano. And of course, we are on our part two, where we are hanging out with the drive presenter from Classic 105. I call him Mamodo, but apparently, <laughs> you all know him as Mike Mondo. Yeah, it yeah. is the one, the only. And you trust to say, Where? Where? <laughs> That's how you say it. We are here. We are here. Yeah. So in our previous episode, we just started uh, unpacking and you had opened up to us about how there was a point you realized you had an alcohol problem. Yes. And so for me, it was a connection to find out. Uh, growing up with your father, uh, when your father was alive, mm -hmm. did you ever see your father take alcohol? Did you never see him take any alcohol? And what do you think were your trigger points to lead you down that path? Um, yes, I did see him drink. In fact, uh, my dad gave me his first, uh, my first ever beer. Mm. Okay. Yeah, when I was even before, like, you know those <laughs> old school guys, eh? Yeah. Yeah. They had a different way of parenting. Yeah. Um, there's an interesting story. One time I snuck into his uh, liquor cabinet thing. Yeah. And I remember I poured myself something. You know? <laughs> yeah. And then I kunyu And yeah. the, next, the next day, um, I was feeling unwell. Mm -hmm. uh -huh basically and i didn't want to go to school yeah and he looked at me and there's a way he could tell this guy is hungover mm. <laughs> <laughs> so he he literally took me told me it's okay the rest of my brothers went to school he took he told me get in the car he took me to this bar yeah it was we used to live in yali back then there was a bar called bp mm. Mm -hmm. and he put me on a chair with him then you remember Tasca Export used to be those small ones those mm. small chupas mm. uh, forget the big ones mm, now there's yeah. something called Tasca Export yeah he opened like five, I think, of them and opened and told me, see, you drink nowadays, yeah? yeah. Maliza, she can <laughs> Maliza. I took that, yeah. I, I was like, no, and you know, there's a stern look he would give you that you'd realize you better do what you're being told right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So I took it and then I was feeling sick and he told me, no, it's Papa kafungua. Kunywa. See, you are an alcoholic now, eh? You drink. <laughs> you know, I didn't even make it halfway. Mm -hmm. I remember I vomited, and then after I vomited, Nini, then he put me in the car. He took me to school mm -hmm. and told me, now finish your classes. Mm -hmm. See, you think you can drink. Wow. That was when I think I was, um, I think I was about 10 mm -hmm. or something, 10 yeah. years old. I never touched booze again after that I experience till I think I was 20, 22. Mm. Yeah. That's the next time I ever touched an Arab drink. Yeah. So then, how do we move from when I join the alcoholic, mm. you are not taking alcohol, to now Mike is taking alcohol and is it's put mm. him in hospital for one week? Yeah. yeah how do because I feel like we've we, we, even in your time jump you've jumped and then now all you're in hospital. How do we move from that point? It was. I think it was a combination of a lot of frustrations that mm. I was facing at the time. Mm. Me and uh, the woman that I, I was seeing at the time, uh, my second born's mom, we were going through a very bad patch. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And for the most part, it was, I didn't know how to express it, how to talk about it with her, because she was also very militant. Yeah. <laughs> you're a man figure it out mm. you know that that kind of mentality and i was really unhappy mm. even the night for example when my daughter was born i was i was at a i was uh MC in the opening of a club it was called aliwa lounge mm. so she was born that night then after i left aliwa went to the hospital and i saw ari and i was of course because i was doing an MC night i was high out of my mind mm. and of course uh, baby's born I go back home for a power nap I keep drinking all these there were pressures in terms of even at the time I remember 
we were having really, really bad fights mm. with my first baby mama. Like we were having arguments about things and, and I, I was going through so much emotionally. I used to drink to just numb the feeling of mm. it all. Mm. In the space of um, um, probably like a week, I think I had consumed, I was doing about a bottle and a half of mm. gin a day. Mm. A day? Yeah. Mm. A bottle mm. and a half. And I would sit down and open it from 8 a.m. And I drink it pole pole throughout the day. Mm. Na ishe, mm. na nichukwe half ingine ni kitoka, job. Mm. Mm. And then I drink also that half. Yeah. But then remember, me and you would have conversations. Mm. And I would, I would lead, I think, I, was, if, I think I'm even mm. the only one who did this in the office. I would come mm. to you and I would tell him, like, Mike. Are you okay? Are you okay? Mm. I'm like, you know, I think it's fine. Yeah. Then in those moments, because I think it's also important because like, we are men having a conversation of men. Mm. Then in those moments, what would make you then feel you cannot open up and share this is what's happening in my world? Because you could, t I mean, I could tell. Yeah, you could I tell. I could tell. Yeah. And I'd be like, no, something is not right here. Yeah. I was, um, I think for the most part, you always have that hope that things will turn out better. Better, yeah. yeah. And so even though you're going through some, because uh, literally me and um, my baby mom at the time, we... I knew I could see this relationship is ending. We were not communicating right. We were shouting at each other every night. Mm. We were always arguing. There's always an issue here, an issue there. And I felt like I couldn't tell her mm. or I didn't get the understanding I was getting. Mm. So I would just numb the pain by drinking. Mm. So, but I always had that hope that maybe she will see things mm. differently. Maybe she'll understand where I'm coming from. Mm. Maybe she'll get it. But I think over time she she didn't yeah. mm. and no matter you know it's that analogy of you you're literally screaming yeah loudly you're screaming for hey excuse me i'm here mm. see yeah. me i'm i'm going through too much right mm. now like that, yeah but she couldn't for her it was you haven't done this or oh, you need to pay for that or oh, you need to do this you need to do that and if you fail to do something you are seen as a villain mm. yeah. in fact let me in a previous episode we were discussing how men are often trained to be weapons so mm. you, you're just providing stuff so provider stuff like that does it bother you that there's very less compassion and empathy towards men who are screaming that they need help mm. through many sometimes destructive ways you know yeah. drugs and stuff like that because that often is just a tip of the iceberg the real iceberg is what you're going through yes. does it bother you yes it does yeah. it does to not listen to your man mm. you see and, and a lot of ladies don't understand this it's not mm. easy yeah. to even do that thing they call to provide mm. it is not easy no man wants to be able to be and uh, wants to be unable to provide for his family. Mm. No one. In fact, if you name one, then I don't know that person maybe identifies as a different gender. Mm. But you want to. But sometimes mm. it can be overwhelming because you have to imagine in African society you're still you're providing for your family number yes. one. You've got black tax mm. Mm. number two. Mm. You've got also probably your own personal things that you want to achieve number mm. three. I know men who make a lot of money. Yeah. But Atta Izzy Kumbuka, the last time he bought himself a pair of shoes. Exactly. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Even to even take himself out and treat himself. Mm. And yet you wonder, hey, but chief, you make, you make almost a million. Mm. What's going on? Mm. And I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Mm. Eh? And madam, 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 everything, madam. And you see, once you do that, and of course as much as we get joy, but you see you, you, you are sucking literally the the blood out of this man mm. eventually he will look for a way to try and kind mm. of refill himself refill his cup yeah and part of the ways they do this is they end up uh, <coughs> drinking mm. some of them get into affairs some of them is uh, get into drugs because now you're not seeing the effects mm. of what it is that you're doing to me and I hate this notion about um, uh, when people talk to me and they tell me, and I'm sorry, this will sound a bit chauvinistic, but honestly, I don't believe it. Mm. That at a, if you are a stay-at-home woman, then that doesn't give you any financial responsibility in that family. Mm. I, I hate that when, when people say that, oh, you know what, but I'm taking care of your kids. Mm. As opposed to who? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, you can't call it a job. That's yeah. a responsibility. Mm. Yeah? <clears throat> you are taking care of the kids. Yes, I'm making sure. Even single single income households nowadays, you see how they struggle mm. because this guy is trying to carry it all by himself. Mm. Eventually, he'll burn out. Because mm. yeah, I think it's different when you've agreed. 
Mm. When someone has said, I want to be stay at home, mm. woman, and you go work, yeah. I think it's different when people have agreed as opposed to when somebody enforces it and says, I don't want to work. Because I've, I've dated someone who once told me that. Mm. They told me, yeah, you just go and be working. Mm. And then you know the worst part about it? She couldn't even cook. Mm. So I'm like, yeah. so I'm going to work. You stay in the house. Yes. You're just going to sleep. <laughs> You're just going to take a dump. <laughs> you will come and eat. <laughs> yeah. You cannot cook. Yeah. You can't do nothing. See, if I want a child, I can go and adopt one. Mm. Yes. Why should I have an adult child in the house? And and that's the thing that mm. I would I would uh, that's some of the reasons why I'm not together with with uh, my previous baby mom. Mm. Such issues mm. whereby all you do is Netflix mm. and baby Netflix, baby, ne and I sit there <laughs> and I'm like, okay, think of any income earning uh, thing that we mm. can do together. Mm. Think of even a biashara you'd like to start. Mm. I'll give you the capital. But all these things are always put aside. Yeah. When you get to, let me tell you, it is not feasible in Kenya anymore, unless you have big money, mm -hmm. yeah, to have you staying as a woman alone. And even for ladies, for themselves, even don't you want some chums for yourself? Mm -hmm. As opposed to every time I talk, itaka kununua kitu kidogo lazima unapigia mse, send me money, send me money. No. But, but Mike, so that we are back to the very interesting thing you're raising. So what do you think was a was about you that made you go into alcohol to deal with this pressure and not anything else. Do you think the environment had been set right? No, no. Yeah. no, no. I, do, I don't blame my environment at all in yeah. any way, shape or form. Mm. I think that I, by nature, okay. take, I'm, I'm a giver by nature. Okay. And I believe most men are. Mm. We derive pleasure from the fact that I could do this for someone or I could do this for this person. In the aspect of giving I realized I wasn't receiving anything from any man. Okay. The so story of many men, yeah. Yes. Mm. Nothing. I get nothing. But I am giving and giving. Mm. In fact, the only people who are giving me anything is probably my job. Mm. So I dive into, into workaholism. Yeah. Yeah? You're always working. Yeah. And then I dive into booze. Mm. You're always drinking. Mm. Because you feel like you've given and you've given and you've given not even once yeah, I'd ask you to even do an experiment. Mm. Walk along the street and ask any man, when was the last time, yeah, you were taken out on a date by your woman? <laughs> <laughs> Just a date. Yeah. Or even when was the last time your woman even told you, thank you for all that you do for us. Mm. And appreciated you for it. Mm. You'll find a lot of men say, I, Abana, and a lot of women believe that it's a right. It's Which entitlement, is, yeah. yeah. it's an entitlement. Yeah. It's, the, it's like the stages of creating dependency. Mm. After entitlement, mm. this person believes that now it's my right. You're supposed to give me money. Mm. When you see people like that billionaire mm. who was on the Star newspaper just a few days ago, whose wife was asking him, uh, ex-wife rather, is asking him to pay 100 million mm. Kenya shillings. He was kicked out of his house in Gigiri. The guy lives in a two-bedroom in Kilimani. And yet he has a mansion in Gigiri. And all these men are going through these things. Mm. And the minute that I say, no, I won't do that, now you're labeled everything. You're victimized. Mm. You are, you are put, every, every man has a label of some sort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, how do you think we came here as a society? Because it's, not, it's even in everything. Even in a watchman, a watchman, mm. male man has a label. Mm. Even the guy, you know, the guy in the street, every man. How do you think we moved from a place where we would sit and revere and respect each other in our roles as genders mm -hmm. and came into this place where it's like men just can't do nothing right. Yeah, but it's because also women believe they don't need men. Toxic feminists at least. Mm -hmm. They live in this utopia of this idea that I can do it just like a guy can do it. Mm -hmm. When did we stop having the problem? Men are very proud about their roles. Mm -hmm. In fact, if a man, give a man, let me tell you, Anytime, give pay a man a million shillings a month for the rest of his life, mm. see if his family is going to lack food mm. or roof over their heads, at least for a sane man. Mm. Yeah, women are trying to be men mm. and they are not taking pride in their role as a woman. Mm. God bless the day women will stand and say, I'm the best homemaker in the world mm. and feel proud about it. Mm. They have degraded their own roles mm. to the point that if you are just like you're saying, a stay at home mom. You know, I'd rather you tell me you're staying at home, eh? but you are also doing something else for yourself. Mm. Like, at a time when it's just running there, it's something that's yeah. yours. You know? 
but you're showing that indeed I, I am the best at this. Mm -hmm. To be able to, to be a nurturer and be proud mm -hmm. of being a nurturer. Yeah. But now, they want to, now we want to be hardcore. We'll sit in a bar with a woman and she'll drink just as much as I drink. Mm -hmm. She will spend just as much as I spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she will do everything. Mm. And then now you've built a society where you, as a, uh, your roles as men have now been diluted to the point that you're not seen as men anymore. Mm. So now, for them, they believe they are the real men, they are the pants. So mm. you'll be labeled misogynist, you'll be labeled a chauvinist, mm. you'll be labeled this or that. It's always a label. Mm. And you know, often in this episode, I think I'm the one who sometimes steps in so that we're not, you know, because another thing we're also afraid of as men is to be misunderstood. Mm. Because you say one thing, and somebody stretches it yes. completely. So even the freedom of expression to say what who, what we truly want to say is very mm. difficult. So, But just to say about the issue of um, a stay-at-home wife, they mm. say that this role is extremely difficult, mm. and there are countries that can look at the sort of work that they're doing and quantify it into hours, and the government ought to have a social protection policy that then compensate that. Because home... home Providing being a home on being, being a person who takes care of the home is such a fundamental role because yes. societies are made and broken at homes. Now yeah. let me explain to you yeah. about the stay-at-home women. Yeah. And by the way, if that's your path, by all means, mm. so, so do your thing. Yeah. But have an economic activity that is going on yeah. that you can even run from home yeah. if you have to. But have an economic activity. Yeah. Let me tell you. Eh? What, what happens, God forbid, if I drop down and die? Mm. How are you going to raise these children? Mm. So you're telling me you'll keep staying home. How? Yeah. There has mm. to be an economic activity. I've seen this firsthand, bro. Mm. This is something that happened to me when I lost my father. Mm. And at that time, mother didn't have a job. Mm. What could she do? Look at now, look at now in general. This is something that I lived in. For me, I have, I have a very, very particular ideology about even if you are, you're a wife and you don't have a job, answer this. Start like a small business that you run that brings in income for yourself, mm -hmm. for yourself. So that small, small things, like you mm -hmm. need to sort out your hair. Why are you so boring there about your money for hair? Mm -hmm. You can sort that out by yourself. You want to do your nails. See, you can do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm, if I'm going to do everything, purely financially everything, what it's going to do eventually over time is there'll be a sense at which I will be feeling like, I own a need. You're, you're spending too much money. Mm. You're, you're taking too much of my tubes. If anything happens to me and I, now I don't have that income, mm. what sort of respect will you have for me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the things that I'm seeing, uh, one of the directions I'm seeing how we are speaking over here also for me is just to then take our conversation just slightly a bit through. Because mm -hmm. one thing I have observed over time is that we as a, as a society in general have heaped all responsibility on men mm -hmm. and then never really understood that even in a family setup, it's mutual roles. Yes. There's part A, part B comes together to become mm -hmm. A, B. Mm -hmm. But what we've done is the men go and work, go and do this. I'm taking care of the children, I still need my compensation. And for me, my question that I usually ask myself is, okay, then even me, I can say, okay, I'm paying for the house or whatever it is. Everyone's, if everyone starts the direction of, I need compensation for this, every other person, even a child next to you, will tell you, okay, even yeah. me, I need compensation for being a member mm -hmm. of this family. Oh, yeah. My role here to add to this. So mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we, we are in a, in a space in our society also where our roles have been so diluted mm -hmm. over time without a passing down of Nini, that we don't understand where, who is supposed to do what. Mm. Even when we understand mm -hmm. who's supposed to do what, we still want this to come and make sense to this. Because mm. for me, I think people just, I think people just need to sit down and have conversations and figure out what works for you. <laughs> I know there's a term you hate, and I'll say it. It's the patriarchy. I know you don't like that term. Yeah, but I think, I think. <laughs> she doesn't like I, that I term. don't like it because but I think we got something good. Yeah. Yes. Like the same, we got something good, and then because people are angry at something, mm -hmm. they decided to turn it and it becomes bad. What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with patriarchy. No, no, let me, let me, let me, let me say my point. <laughs> but this let is me, what he wants. He, he, no, he. let me say my point. My point is this, that uh, it's the patriarchy that makes Mike feel like I have to be a provider. 
because then your identity is attached to your provision, not you as Mike as a man. Yes. Because often you need to be seen as a man, as I mean as a human being. Yeah. Because if today, God forbid, you're not able to provide, do you stop being a human being? No. Does God stop loving you? No. So this cultural, what we call gender roles, gender roles can be harmful. The gender roles of a woman who, because for me, I can't be with a woman who expects me to provide. Mm. And the entirely, to yeah, work entirely. as a man to provide. I can't. Mm. We are getting into a partnership. And we are having this discussion about yes. that. So there were harmful traditional gender roles, even for this issue of women staying at home. The reason why sometimes there are many women who are saying no to staying at home is because they have been dispossessed. So you find that there's a man who marries this woman and says, oh, be a stay-at-home woman. Mm -hmm. Then ultimately, along the way, leaves them and goes to another family, neglects the first family. Mm -hmm. And so many women have suffered in the hands of what I'd call terrible men. Okay. Who have done things mm -hmm. that then their antennas are extremely high and so you say, by the way, now me, I am not going to be a housewife, I'm not going to be this, I'm not going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and stuff like that. So we also got to have to look at the impact of our own yes. toxic aspects, especially of our cultures where we come from, and see how that has created the sort of world that we are living in now. Here's the thing. First of all, let me, let me correct you. Uh, not correct you. That's fine. Just correct But uh, okay. yeah. give you my opinion. You'll have to talk about women a lot on your podcast because yeah. it's yeah. intrinsically tied to a man's life. Okay. And in like many that. ways, yeah. a man's state of mental well-being. I like that. Okay. Everything, <laughs> let me tell you, it's like what I always say, that everything you do of an economic nature as a man, mm. there's a woman uh, that has inspired it in your life. Mm. And you can't ignore it. Mm. The reason you wear a nice shirt is so that <laughs> your woman can look at you and be like, hey, that's a nice shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice shirt. But if, if we had a world full of men, yeah, yeah, we'd, have, <laughs> we'd be walking <laughs> with <laughs> boxers. <laughs> 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 but I like anyway. that angle, honestly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Yeah. Patriarchy, patriarchy is not bad in terms of how it's implemented mm. it is bad in terms of when it becomes a power pl a power play mm. yeah mm. the implementation i think patriarchy is a, is a is a very healthy way of dealing with society mm. think of the biggest person you could respect right now i'd like to believe god is a man mm. okay mm. god is one of the strictest people in the world mm. but loves you mm. Do you understand? Yeah. You need a, a sense of strength in a man. Yeah. A man should be able to tell you, excuse me, my wife. Yeah. Imagine we are not doing that. Yeah. Because like I ask, I ask uh, uh, my married young brother one time, yeah. in, a, in a house, if you, you are not agreeing on one item, one thing, eh? yeah. let's take something simple, like whether we are eating nyama or chicken. Yeah. yeah? And you have both of you believe you're equals. Mm. Hey, this one has insisted I want chicken. Mm. You, you have said me I want nyama choma. Mm. So who has the final say? Mm. You know my brother who I know. Jehovah has <laughs> the final <laughs> say. <laughs> you know, and he tells me yeah. in my house this is how it's going to. Be. If I say we're eating meat, very mm. imagine you eat that meat. I'm a come out It's so interesting. In another house, then mm. the solution would be. Who's, what when we got here together? What how were the roles discussed? Yes, you are the one who's supposed to cook, so you mm. cook and everything. Hey, no, there are other houses where they would say that. Like mm. for example, uh, there are places I know, couples I know, who in their house the man really doesn't care about what happens in the mm. kitchen. Mm. Me as long as I've eaten, yeah. whether we are eating dengu or whether we are eating uh, <laughs> skuma or nyama. Mm. But, but, but I think Mike, to bring us back to a very interesting conversation. So how 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 has it how how does it feel being a Mike Mondo in a world that sort of um, I say pathologizes men, like there's something inherently wrong with men. How do, we, how do you still discipline, how do you still assert boundaries as a father and as um, you know, a husband? How do you assert these boundaries without coming out like um, a toxic man? <laughs> I start with myself and my family. Okay. You see, in my nucleus of my family, mm. that is the only thing I need to worry about. As long as I know I've, I've raised them right, yeah. I have done right by them. That, in fact, is the only way to change it. You start, everyone starts with your own canuclea. Stop worrying about what Chito is doing. Mm. Stop worrying about what Alex is doing or what John is doing. You in your canuclears, are you raising the right kind of men? Are you raising the right kind of girls? Mm. Are you raising people you can be proud of that emulate and mirror your values and your belief systems? Or are you going to raise people who are so consumed by how social media is determining life or by how they are seeing their friends do life mm, yeah mm. you need to start with your own so me i deal with it that way i'm like me as long as my home my four walls 
we are good. Ah. But do you sometimes you feel know, like you're working on a, on, a, on, a, on a live wire that if I do this, I might be perceived as this? Oh, that? no, no. That, yeah. uh, that I don't care about. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> no, no. Make a link, bro. Me, me, by the way, I don't care. Yeah. Even if you abuse me, you like I told you this uh, in the previous episode, yeah. I don't care about another person's opinion of me. Mm. As long as I know, before God and before you and myself, I can say, I have never done anything wrong to you. I have never cosired you, lied to you, or treated you like come on into but me have always been fair with you. My si my rule is just very simple. How I treat you, you treat me the same. Mm. Evil too. Mm. If I'm good to you, be good to me. Mm. Period to come on in buyer, but I understand kwa nini wa ukona ubaya na but you know something that she said that I think is very important, mm. which as men we should learn to do, especially in a family setup. Mm. I think every man, it is every man's responsibility to teach and train his children mm. and to be responsible for what he puts out of his house to the society. Yes. What we've done lately is men have become so obsessed with everybody else's business mm. besides their own oh, home. Yes. Yeah. So you sit down and teach, are you, are you raising children who are respectful? And whatever values it is you want to instill in them. Mm. But what we've done is we're expecting our teachers to do that, mm. the house help to I'm do that, mm. and auntie. Yeah. Then you're expecting the police to show them how not to drive badly yes. when yes. it is a, if every imagine. And I think we've discussed this theory before on a personal level. Mm. I believe, like where we are here located, mm. if 50 men in this neighborhood yes. taught their children personally and ensured their children are growing up right, this I believe future. this entire constituency, ah. Dr. Mm. Yeah. in fact, constituency have even gone far, this entire nation, because yeah. yeah. you will have 50 men from a right neighborhood mm. who were raised the right way, mm. who can take up leadership roles and do the right things. So, and, once, and that's why I think it's always very important to discuss these roles, things, mm. and as a man to understand what is my role in the life of my children. Mm. It's not just to pay bills. Mm. It's not just to provide, oh, you're going to school. There's an important aspect of raising and teaching. teaching. Mm. To mm. teach your children and say, when you're crossing the road, look left, look, look right, right, look left again. Yeah. If it's clear, cross. Mm. In life, before you cross in a relationship mm. with a woman, look left, look, look right, right, look left again. Look it becomes a life principle. Mm. Something of the how sort. many people even, let, let me ask you, even your kid starts learning how to drive. Yeah. But, but you know, you many men would love to be present, but sometimes they say that uh, you got to have to compromise that either you are present and there's not enough money nah. or you're away and there's enough money. The men who've said that and, 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 and it's not our no, work. I, to, no, no, I've, yeah. I've, I, 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 I work, do yeah. know men yeah. like that, yeah. but I think we have 24 hours, bro, yeah. in a day. Yeah. I think we have 24 hours. In those 24 hours, you have eight hours to rest, eight hours to do your job, but you have a whole other eight hours you can do something with. Mm. I think we have created a toxic work culture among men. Even, mm. and I mean, I've been those men who are like, no, chape kazi, ni chape kazi, ni chape kazi. Mm. But then sometimes you ask yourself, like, for me as a man, you're leaving your house to go to a job or to get 3,000 bob at the end of the day. Mm. And also think about it this way. Mm? Do the math. You leave the house, you go to work. You've been in that, uh, in that uh, office. You've spent, you've given all your energy to all these other people. You, you mean to home. tell me unakuja nyumbani 7 p.m. and then you only have two hours before the kids are in bed. Sometimes you, and come, you come and get them in bed already. Yeah. Yeah, or you're coming to get them in bed. Mm. Do you intentionally plan your time to understand that even if I'm calling you out for a drink, you're like, Z, me have to be home by 6.30 mm. because I need to spend time with the kids mm. before they go to bed. Mm. And it becomes a culture. Even by example, what you're doing is these children now start looking at Father and saying, eh, mm. Father has always been home at this time. Mm. Some sort you of know? Yeah, discipline. discipline. There's a discipline. Accountability. Yeah. Mm. And out through you, they'll start mirroring. You know a kid when they are smaller, when you say, let's say, the F word, mm. and they catch on to it, they, they start repeating it, you're shocked. Oh my gosh. Mm. That's why you, there are some movies you don't let them watch mm. and you don't speak some kind of language in front of your kids. Mm. Same thing happens even in your character. They mirror you. They start seeing, ah, father does this, father does that. Oh, you, so they keep now starting to be like you mm. over time. Mm. And eventually they become the, uh, you become the ultimate example of mm. what a good man is. Mm. Mm. But, um, Mike, um, how do you drop Mike Mondo outside the home and then you get in and become... The, do you ever struggle? Daddy Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Daddy, Mike. Daddy Mike. Because I think sometimes as the celebrity think and get into people's heads and so yeah. you think your children, your children. are your fans. 
Yeah. 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 There's something we are practicing um, at home with mm. uh, with Madam, mm. where we are talking to each other with a sign of respect. Okay. So, like for example, teaching the boys how to say yes sir mm. and no ma'am and just mm. words of respect. So, like you're just everything. But sana sana, once you get home, put on some cocoa melon mm. or some uh, Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Ah, boss! Mm. Now we sit down on the couch and it's just happy times and mm. talking about each other's days. So you change, like at home I'm not on my phone as much. Okay. So that phone, first of all, I like, put it on silent, put mm. it away. Mm. Um, screen, uh, dinner time is everyone on the dinner table. Mm. All screens off. Mm. I want to know what's going on with your day. Mm. What, what did you do in school? What did teacher so and so say mm. about this? Have you finished your homework? What's happening in your life? And these conversations, we have them. Mm. And so in that moment, they don't, you're not seen as Mike Mondo, the radio presenter, yeah. in that moment, you're in full daddy, daddy mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't even think most children even recognize that their parents are these or some people. Yeah, mm. they don't know. It's like, I think Obama's kids just look at him, they're like, see, you're the guy I've just known my whole life. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't think they no. recognize in their heads, like, I'm sure they're like, yeah, at one point you're this person. Yeah. But then they're just regular, oh, I, I, I believe that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's amazing. But though, though I've had one time one of my kids heard me on radio and then when I got home, she, he started saying, I'm Mike, Mike Mondo. <laughs> <laughs> so that stuck for yeah. a while. It was yeah. like, hey, Mike, Mike Mondo. Yeah. It, it, it chills. Mm -hmm. But but I don't think they really care. Okay. Yeah. Because even like I grew up in a household where my father was well known. Yeah. And to be very honest, I can't remember him in here. I can't remember you him know? being. I remember mm -hmm. moments of, I have moments now as a man. I'm like, hey, this guy was actually great. Man. Like, ah, yeah, <laughs> this, guy, and I'm, hey, this guy was not a small guy. Hey. <laughs> as a man now in an older set. But as a young kid, I mean, I hung out with former presidents. I didn't try to see it. Mm. Like yeah, just be like, ah, oh, this is so and so. Okay. Mm. In yeah. fact, mm. one of my most embarrassing moments mm. were in an elevator. My dad, um, his wife, mm. and with Grasa Marshall, mm. Ma Nelson Mandela's uh, yeah. wife, mm. uh, the late Nelson Mandela's wife. Do you know yeah. what I ended up being? Yeah. I farted in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> In front of Grasa, yeah. Michelle, yeah. I lifted one foot, <laughs> did prr, and yeah. then I said, ah, perfume. Hey. <laughs> my father standing there and thinking, now you know those eyes. Uh, Swallow me and now. And now I'm thinking, my father couldn't whoop my butt in front of Grasa, <laughs> yeah, He had true. to control himself. Yeah. And so we got out. But anyway, do you feel as a male celebrity that other men and women treat you differently because of that? Um, uh, most yes, I actually feel sometimes that's the case. Uh, mm. There's already just that preconceived notion mm. of uh, you're a celebrity, you're known, and so because you're all of these things, then there's uh, there are different kinds of them. Uh, for the women, they are quite direct mm. in terms of their approach towards me and mm. uh, uh, what they want, and like <laughs> for the for the for the men for the men. Mm. It's, I, I don't like the idea that people assume because you are a media personality, so you roll in the money. You're mm. buying for them drinks. Hey, mm. You guys sometimes <laughs> in a bar, you sit down like this, ah, mm. but you're Mike Mondo, Bana. Yeah. Oh, but it does. Ha it has helped in terms yeah. of getting me out of uh, situations with traffic police sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can just say, ah, you're Chanta or Salimia. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you went to the Mike Mondo. Yeah. Mm. There is that sense, you get that sense that yeah, there's a way people are treating you mm. not the same way they treat any other person. But mm. there's an interesting, so when I was working in the media, part of the, the issue I dealt with was um, how fake it can be. Yeah. And how that can trail you into your personal life. Mm. So you don't know whether this person is real or this person is just a client who's trying to vibe you so that you can put their brand on air properly. Yeah. You know the way in the media there's just a lot of yeah. on a katiwa and you don't know, as in this person, is this <laughs> a a genuine? Are <laughs> <a man>. they <laughs> genuine or they're just seeing me as a no. means to their end? Do you think that has affected how you see your friendship, especially male friendships around you? My male friendships are very genuine, so uh, people have to understand that Mike Mondo, the radio presenter, and Michael Wamodo, as he calls <laughs> yeah. the, the, the person, yeah. are, are, are two very different characters. Mm. Uh, Mike Mondo on air, I can be very, very abrasive. I can be uh, very, like, I like teetering on the edge of, you know, mm. literally being kicked off air sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But uh, me as a person and the close friendships that I have, everyone will tell you that uh, this guy is actually one of the sweetest guys we know, you know, and they'll mm. tell you, yeah, you call Mike anytime for anything. Yeah. Because those those are friendships. Friends with friendships I can't pretend. Radio is is theater. Mm, yeah. I like that. Radio is theater of the mind. When mm. I get on air and I turn on that mic, oh my god, now I become another another human being. It's mm. like how, what Denzel says. Mm. He says when every character is different. So every time he goes uh, into a movie, mm. he has to adopt that character. Mm. And sometimes he would be scared mm. that when he comes home, he's not left that character at mm. work. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. What I, well, yeah, that's what I You yeah. know, yeah. and so I have to learn how to, once you're done. You're done. On air, 7 p.m., the character is gone. Mm. Mm. Now I have to be Michael, the authentic person, the real guy, the one who will say, hey, Niaji, drop me here. Twende, taku drop. So, mm. so you've never had a struggle where the celebrity sort of uh, mic interfered with you? Because I know also in the in the space where in mostly men in the media we struggle with a lot of debt sometimes because the celebrity mm. comes and interferes with the personal life. So you want to leave the, po the the celebrity in real life while sometimes it's not realistic. Um, I think not not really. Like I've never I've never I don't think I, I've tried to fake a lifestyle okay. per se because of the celebrity i am i am just the way i am mimi mimi hata kama ningekuwa naishi kibera ningesema naishi kibera but mm. that's that's my life so i'm i'm not ashamed to be at, uh, authentic on that regard i don't like um uh, i'll give you a very good example uh uh Mina has once asked me like mike why don't you upgrade your car go to inchcape tell them i'll get you you get a nice x6 mm. yeah and then uh, i asked him my your car is worth 24 million how how am I going to buy a car at 20 million? <laughs> I don't have 20 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where yeah. is that money? Yeah, there yeah. are times even uh, banks mm. have approached me, telling me, Mike, you see your paisley. Mm. Hey, but you know, we can give you even 15 mic right now. Mm. Uh, I tell them, no, I don't why, what for. No, you need to upgrade that. Uh, mm. I'm like, but bro, <laughs> me need a job. Bana. I look mm. at my job literally as that. Job, yeah. I only have four hours to make sure that 2.3 million Kenyans listen to you. have a good time. Mm. Mm. After I finish that, I've done my part. I've paid my debt to Radio Africa and to mm. society. Now let me go to my life. Mm. Enter my small jalopy. Mm. Go home <laughs> <laughs> and live a good, and yeah. live a good life. Because I know there's usually that pressure that people have. And I mean, we've seen it. We've seen yes, it a lot. Seen. You've seen it as well. Crazy. You sit down and you watch a guy. That's what you're took like, me down, you know, yeah. You can't afford, you can't it. afford exactly. it. Like, yeah. bro, I know what I, I mean. I see the. I know what you guys are. You know. Yes. You can do a rough scale and you're like, bro, ata kama una anhi pesa. Hiyo nyumba una ishi. You can't afford it. Mike has said something that's, that's very because I think when you're talking, I'm also seeing just the problems that led me to the path that I went in 2018 when I left the media because yeah. the media landscape can get you into this space. And I like what you're saying that you gotta be grounded and be genuine and say, yes. I can't afford I this can't. thing. Because many men can't do that. Many men would, if a woman says. Uh, but um, you know, why are we living in this neighborhood? And you know, they say them subtly, very subtly. You yes. know, we move, we a ratio. Why are we still living in a two-bedroom house, say in a place like Dono? Yes. So the ability to say that this is what we can afford is what mm. makes many men to get into debt because then they say, "Me, I will do this thing to impress my friends, mm. to impress mm. the women who are in my life." Ah, me, I'll go and take a debt. Mm. And then you can then you know you can't afford, afford. afford. And it's not necessary. And it's not necessary. Then you go and yeah. buy a big vehicle. Your vehicle alone, one side of it in our Ribika, you mm. have to sell some portion of land to fix it. <laughs> but because you are, you know, mimi ndo, mimi ndo kusema. There's a story actually, one of our, one of our friends, Catherine Mwangi, was telling the story of um, yeah. a gentleman called Mwao, who's um, a manager in one of the subsidiaries of CDN Bank, one of mm. what's your story in KTN. And this gentleman made money, I think 20 mic, and he moved from uh, Rongai to, to Karen. Yeah. Right there and then. But I don't think you can. Me, in fact, yeah. if I go to the mic right now, I already know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what I am the not guy, doing and what I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He moved from all the way to Runda, and he got the mom chase cars, and it was being, I found that story quite fascinating. Yes. In fact, they were paying staff, paying people, tipping everybody. In fact, when the mom was being uh, chauffeured from the village Nairobi, there was a chase car, private juvalets, all these things mm -hmm. happening, you know. 
But that can be an extreme example. But there are so many men, and let us mm. be honest, who are living beyond their means mm. because their exactly. identity is tied to the performance exactly. of their friends, of the women who are in their lives. Oh, mindo, mindo, kiongozi, kiongozi. Unatoka chairman, ukiingia for resident chairman. No, it's stupid and it's dumb. Let me tell you. It is, it is stupid and dumb. Why do I need to impress someone with, if I cannot impress my friends with the content of my character, mm. yeah. not with the things I have, mm. my character should be enough. Yeah. So I don't need to buy the hottest car. Mm. Who soon, I mean, I could... I could go to that bank and get that 15 million mm. loan yeah. and then go and buy a very expensive uh, V8. Yeah. Nikwena Tessa in Nairobi Mbaya. Mm. But every month I'm paying this bank half my salary. Yeah. But a lot of um, celebrities do want to keep up with that lifestyle. Um, I see some of them who I know for sure. Mm. You can't afford that lifestyle. They're mm. always traveling to Dubai, Mara Sijui, they're in Costa every weekend. Mm. And I'm like, I... I <laughs> I I'm, I'm I'm I make quite a good amount of money. Yeah. 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 But I look at it in terms of if I cannot mm. afford to be in Mombasa every week, yeah. go na tua pesa wapi? Yeah. You can't vacation all the time. Mm. And you have done two trips to Dubai in the space of a month. Mm. I'm emphasizing I this story Chito because we are having a pandemic of young people mm. who are getting into risky businesses. So for mm. example, wash wash, mm. you know, NFT and all these online scams. Sometimes even mortgaging our own you know yes. reputation and personality and character and peace just so that then we can have an instagrammable life yes mm. but the truth of the matter is the social media is a very small part of our lives it's a very I small part of even of yeah. your life it's yeah. a very small part of the world in general exactly, yeah. the world is such a huge, huge thing, thing. Yes. and social media is, is an aspect yeah. Media is an aspect. Yeah. Banking is an aspect. Is, yeah. Governance is an aspect. Yeah. Hot, like all these bits are little bits and pieces yeah. of little things we're trying to impress. But then you also sometimes, it's someti and that's why I say, you know when I'm talking about men teaching, yeah. Rosanna's bringing us back to that side, yeah. where it's important for a father to teach your children. Mm -hmm. It's important for your father to teach your sons mm -hmm. what manhood is and what it's yes. not. Yeah. Manhood is not looking at the man next door and being like, I will do whatever it is that you have. Manhood mm -hmm. is no. looking at him and possibly using him as an inspiration mm -hmm. exactly. to get to that point. Not a competition. And also the yeah. reality that as a, if you're not living on 70% of your income, yeah. you are doing badly. Yeah. Yeah. You're in fact, you are in a danger zone. Because yeah. I think every, every single person Especially as and because men were the ones who are seen to be providing mm. your household and your you yourself should be on seventy percent of your income. Mm. If you're living on a hundred percent of your income, uh, we need to sit back down and, and reevaluate mm. because thirty percent should be in your investments. Mm. Yes. seventy percent should be. In fact, thirty percent is what you pay yourself. Yeah. seventy percent is what you live on. Mm. So you see, for me, in a family setup, yeah. there has to be that discussion. As a man, you should be able to lead the homestead and say, you know, as a family, so that you don't have children who think, and you don't have men who end up thinking that the phone is my identity, yeah. the car is my identity, okay. where I live is mm. my identity. Because mm. we also have that problem where we have people who are living in pi pipeline we too, yeah. Kileleshwa. Yeah. They've gone into Kileleshwa, a guy can't even breathe. Another yeah. apartment yeah. is next to <laughs> him. I'm a nyonga, but because he wants to say, yeah. Naishi yeah. Kileleshwa. Yeah. Exactly. He's living, he can't even, he's stressing himself. Yet he can get probably a better house. Yes. Huko on the other side of town. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's very it, that is important in terms of, mm. and that's why also for your kids, you need to start teaching them financial literacy very, very early. early yeah. mm. Very early. I mm. hate this thing of where uh, you all you always pangeing for your kids. Eh? Mm. Um, it's important for to teach them about money and how money can work for you and mm. its value to you. That this is yours and it, it has ownership. <laughs> I practice that with uh, with our eldest, mm. yeah, who is thirteen, mm. and we. We, we tell her, this mm. is how much you have. Mm. Now, if you spend it, save it, invest it, that's going to be up to you. Mm. But if, just know this is going to cater for X, Y, Z. Mm. So let's see how. So she always tries to to use the least yeah. amount of money as possible <laughs> yeah. so that she saves on something, right? Yeah. But that financial literacy is important, and especially yeah. for kids when they are young. Yeah. You start slowly and slowly and eventually it becomes part of your character. Mm. And so when they see people moving to these kileleshwas and mm. uh, whatever, and I say to, ah, ah, mini acheni si yoki yangu. So then, mm. what was the biggest financial mistake you made? There's a time I, I, I took out a loan, I think of about three million shillings. Yeah. Mm. Um, and those really, I, I can't even tell you what I did with that money. <laughs> like, yeah, to yeah. Not by then we went under. Yeah. I, can't. <laughs> mm. I don't even, I can't remember. Mm. 
I don't have anything tangible mm. that I have to say that this is what I did with that. Yeah, Michael, you could have three meter. Three meter, Elisha. Will you go alone because you, you had no idea what you're gonna do? Me, with I it. did not know what I'm gonna <laughs> do. Then, you know, you see, in in, in, in comparison to my Ikaisha <laughs> too. In comparison to your to my 300k, which I did shopping <laughs> at all, I changed my wardrobe entirely when hey. I got some money, a family. Uh. So I decided I'm gonna change my wardrobe entirely. That's how I spent that money. And I'm like, my goodness. I, I, mine is better. Now it's better. Not at <laughs> three million. The power of ten of yours yeah. is what this guy did. <laughs> exactly. Three mic from, but at least I, I managed to clear that that facility. You have, because you, you did not start like this. So it's also come with experience. Because you've done radio for a while. Yeah. So it's come with a bit of experience. You'd admit that in your younger years, there must have been some sort of vanity. Um, or oh, no, you've, you've never just been a person who's vain. You've just been, you know, very... But you, you have to realize that when I was doing the job, remember when I came to Nairobi and I started media, my main reason was, was to, to earn a living okay. and also to be able to support my younger brothers, to help mom mm. support my younger brothers. So it wasn't about so celebrity? It wasn't about being a celebrity. Of me, I was here to make money. And that's all I wanted. In mm. fact, I even tell my, I tell my better half to this day, mm. I would, if I can make money without the noise of being on radio mm. and I can just be the most unknown human being but I'm making money I would take that deal any time over fame any day mm. because I'm, I do it for a reason I don't do it for the likes for the <coughs> hype for the come on man you okay. are surely Mpakalini. so I started early doing it and even I, I've, I've not told you this but when I used to get paid at Hot 96 mm. I never used to keep the salary I used to give it all to Madi mm give it to mother, pay the school fees for mm. this. I, I became like the old man at home. Mm. I give it to uh, you, sort out the, the light bill, mm. sort out the uh, Zuku, or mm. sort out this. So it never was for me about this. Uh, me, for me, I looked at it like, I only work four hours. Once at that time, the first salary was 50K. Wow. Like four hours for, for 50K? 50K? Yeah. I'll take it. Mm. I'm inside. Mm. My first alone was also 50 yeah. 50K. Yeah. It was also 50 already. So has your mom did she did you finally get vindicated ultimately because then you wanted to when you were you're living nursing oh now? Oh yeah. How how is it now? <laughs> <laughs> is it oh now? she was so proud. In yeah. fact it changed the first time I did uh, the breakfast show on classic. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So I used to do the drive and, and I don't know, drive time she's probably doing something she would mm. not probably be tuned in or so this one time I, I woke up in the morning and I was told you need to cover Minas show and I went and I was, as I was doing the show and doing it, I started getting WhatsApp messages from uh, my mom's friends or uh, sometimes aunties. Mm. Hey Mike, we're hearing you, congratulations. My God, it's congratulations. And I think they told mom also, we've had your boy mm. on Minas show. Mm. Hey, mom called me. Oh, so you did Minas show. Yeah. Okay, you're doing it for how long? Come here, I'm just covering for a week. And I'm okay, sour, sour. Mm. The next day, she was telling everyone. Mm. 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 <laughs> 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 such a, hey, it's very good. Nini kidogo kidogo when she goes to her to chama meetings, you hear, yeah. oh, that is. So now she got a point where. She, she started now changing that idea. Like, if he can do mm. what Mina does, wow. Mm. Then I probably, there's a level of success I didn't know he could achieve in this mm. line of work he's doing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for coming to Hang no Us the Man's no Perspective problem. podcast. Yeah. Um, uh, make sure that you're subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's called Man's Perspective Africa. You can also check out we're on Spotify as well. And of course, our new home now, KTN, where we are. But hey, this is what we also need you to do. Make sure that you know where we are. We are at Karibu Inn. It's in Loresho. I am the Golden Voice God's son, Chiron Lovu. My name is Danny Shodongo, a.k.a. the son of Kano. See you next week. Absolutely. Ah, sugar. It's fantastic, yeah. man. Thanks. Loved it. Yeah. <laughs>